Hey Worship Leader, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy Cooper. If you're new here, welcome. I'm glad you're here. We talk about all things worship ministry, stuff that I'm interested in, like pastoring your people, leading your teams, and gear. And today we're talking about guitar gear, and I'm going to be sharing with you eight of my tone secrets. These are just tips that I thought of that I thought well, this would be a cool video. If someone was new to the Helix, uh, what would I want to tell them? Uh, I've had several friends who got these. And I'm like, hey, here's some here's some things that I do. So I want to share them with you. And this is true to help you get good tone whether you have the full Helix or the HX Stomp XL, which is what I'm playing through, or the regular HX Stomp. No matter what you have, we want good tone because good tone is something that we're always striving for. So let's dig in. But first, I almost forgot, I want to give you my Tone Secrets Guide PDF. Uh, we walk through building a preset step by step. There's pictures and paragraphs of me explaining it. It's a full step by step process of some of the, the tips that I use as I'm building presets. So if you're interested in that, check the link in the description. The description. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get an amp. Great tone begins with an amp. You can't just slap effects on an amp that doesn't sound good and expect it to go anywhere. And in the Helix, we have the option to have an amp and a cab separate if we want. And what I like to do is use a dual cab. I usually just use the same cab and then mic it up with different mics and then I just adjust the levels and the mic distance just to make sure that the each side is, uh, if one's hotter than the other, I make them the same. But here's our first tip. Once you get your cabs dialed in like you like them, crank up the early reflections on one of them pretty high, like over 75%. I usually dial mine in Mine in at 83% because, well, that's the year I was born and it seems to work out pretty good. I got HX Edit pulled up over here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll bring in the Matchstick 2 and over here we want to go to just cab and make sure that we hit dual cab. And it doesn't matter which cab we pick, I'm just going to get the, the Match G25 and then select that one again. And on the second one, I'm going to bring the mic, we're going to do a, a 57 dynamic, I'm going to bring the distance all the way in. And then the early reflections, we can pull this up to, let's just say 83, that's what I would do. And um, we'll save that. I'll undo it so you can hear what we have so far. And then I'll put on the early reflections so you can see what the difference is. It just gave it some separation. I love it. Next, number two, I like to add my first reverb. And this reverb is going to be a high mix, low decay reverb. This really just helps sound like you're in a real space. So I usually put this at the end of my chain and I come over here to reverb and then I go to legacy and I usually use a plate or a room. Today we'll use a room, we'll bring the decay down really short, like I said, and then we'll max out the mix to 50%. And this kind of gives it a, a slapback feel. Sounds like we're in a real space, like I said. But here's the tip, tip number two is utilize pre-delay. Pre-delay um, separates the reverb from your initial pick attack. And so I like to use heavy pre-delay when I'm using this, my first reverb. Bring it up about halfway, 100 milliseconds, and it... Now that's a little bit extreme, but I find I kind of like it extreme because when I'm playing chords... It sounds like I'm in a, a real space and I feel that echo. Like I said, if you don't like it that strong, just dial this mix back and it won't be so in your face. Nice. Number three, I like to add now my ambient reverb. I like to have two different reverbs so that I can click on and off this ambient reverb and have trails continue to go, which, you know, us HX stompers, we have only one DSP chip. So a lot of times there's a trick where you can just have one reverb and use a a, uh, a foot switch to toggle up and down like the mix and the decay, which is a great little trick. I have done that, I do it many times. Some of my presets in the Expanse Pack do that. But if I have the DSP, I usually like to have two different reverbs for this case. I like to have a super ambient reverb that I can click off and then play on top of it if I need to. So I like using the reverb, let's make sure it's stereo, and we'll use the glitz. And tip number three, little tone secret, if, if, if this is a secret, it's not really a secret, but if you're new to um, the HX Stomp or Helix world, it might be, is that the mix level here, uh, anything above 50 starts getting into the, the kill dry uh, tone. If it's 100%, you will have no more of your original tone, your guitar tone coming in. 50% is as high as you can get 
um, without killing your tone. So for what we're going for, we wanna stay with 50 and below. And with this ambient reverb, I like to keep my setting, the mix setting down at like 25% and then adjust from there. That's a good starting point. With the other reverb, I like starting, like I said, around 50 and then backing it off if I need to. Bring the decay up, take the mix down to about 25 and um, put trails on. We'll put this on foot switch one, save our work. Clean tone. It's beautiful. And I just toggled it off and it's, it's still trailed on beautifully. And I still have my other reverb intact. Now, number four, as far as drive goes, if you need to save space as far as like in your signal chain or save DSP, cause you know us stompers, um, I also have the Helix, I'm enjoying the Helix. Having the two extra DSP chips, the one extra, having two DSP chips uh, is coming in quite handy. But if you're trying to save space, trying to save DSP, you can use the amp drive to get more drive rather than adding an overdrive. And you can set that to a foot switch to toggle it up and down so it actually acts as an overdrive and I never turn my amp off. So it's just kind of cool to be able to um, do this because I've never been able to do it with any of my like real life amps. But tip number four, the tip, the tone secret is when you start cranking the gain on an amp, a lot of the amps, not, not all of them, a lot of them handle that, a lot of that gain differently. And I've noticed a lot of them start flubbing out <laughs> or getting muddy. And so just make sure that you start, when you gain up, pay attention to the bass and the treble. Sometimes I like to back off the bass, add a little treble or presence, just make sure the high end is there. If you need more volume, just hit the channel volume up a little bit rather than keep adding gain because gain is going to compress your signal even more and sometimes you'll you'll fight trying to find yourself in the mix. So our drive right now is 1.2 and presence is at zero. So let's set a foot switch to toggle drive two. Bump the drive up, also do presence. And so now this foot switch toggles those settings. So here we go. And here's a little bonus tip I wasn't planning on saying, but my input gain is off and you can hear some noise. So go to this main LR out here and turn your input gain on and then you can slide this up and down to when the noise goes away and usually where they have it on the factory setting is pretty good and it helps get rid of that noise if you slide it up too much your signal will be get squashed too much you can hear it cutting out a little bit so somewhere in here I'm gonna scoot my amp and my cab up because it's time for number five to add a delay. We need delay. And because I used two different reverbs, which like I said, I like using two different reverbs, I usually just use one delay, but there's a tip in making one delay sound like two delays. To mimic a dual delay, you can pick a stereo, make sure it's stereo, simple delay. I think if anything in the Helix says simple, it means it uses like a lot less DSP. And so hit the stereo, simple delay, set it to quarter note, go down to where it says spread and set that to 75% and that will be a dotted eighth because a dotted eighth is 75% of a quarter note. Fractions are hard, but trust me. So we'll go here, we'll go delay, stereo delay, simple delay. We'll set this to quarter note. The mix, the scale is already at 75%. What I'll do is I'll set a, a foot switch, foot switch three to toggle between 100% and 75% so you can hear the difference. And this is with it set at 75%. You can hear it's wider. We got two different delays kind of going on. All right, number six, overdrive. Now when picking an overdrive for worship, I like to select an overdrive and dial it in to complement my amp. We worked hard on getting our amp to sound good. We don't want our overdrive to just have a completely different sound unless that's what you're going for, but that's not typically what I'm going for. So the tip is, or the tone secret, is to use the volume control to push your amp into having more drive rather than sending more drive or gain 
into the amp, which will, like we talked about earlier, compress it more. And the only reason I say this, because I, I, I know a lot of guys like myself like overdrive. We like and we like to stack overdrives, but when you start stacking too many overdrives and you start getting a lot of gain fed into another pedal and another pedal or another effect, another a block, it starts compressing and it really is difficult to stand out in a mix. And so they keep adding more drive and that's not necessarily always the solution. So let's pull up one of my favorite drives, the Tima. We have gain, I'm gonna bring the gain down and then we're gonna use the volume, the level here to push the amp. I'm gonna bring the gain down pretty low. This is our clean tone. I mean, already all I did was bring the gain down and it still adds a nice sparkle. So we could now bump up this level. It's beautiful and our gain is set to just a little bit over one. Let's see how far we can go down and still like what we have. Uh, I'm just gonna take the gain all the way down. Gain all the way off, we still have the pedal pushing the amp and it's pushing it into more overdrive and it sounds not compressed. It still sounds like the amp and I, I love it. Max out the volume. Now those are extreme settings, but you get the point. Use volume to push gain to your amp. Allow your amp to produce the gain being pushed in from the overdrive rather than sending a bunch of gain into your amp. But having said that, if you are in the mood to have a high gain, a very compressed overdriven sound, which sounds great, I'm not against that at all. I just want you to know that adding more gain and compression does not help you stand out in the mix. What you want is more volume. So if you have a highly compressed, a high gain sound, and you want like more of a boost to cut through, you might want to even take down the gain, but boost up the volume. So what you need to do is set a foot switch to increase the main output by maybe three decibels. Let me show you what I mean. So we can go here to the main out, and we have our level here. So let's do another foot switch, foot switch five and put this at three, and that will give us a little boost on top of our overdrive. So let's, let's make our overdrive highly compressed, lots of gain. Let's add another overdrive just to prove our point. Oh, the, yes, this one will do it. some high gain there. So what we can do now is instead of cranking up the gain or setting a foot switch to crank up the gain on that overdrive, we can now use our foot switch to get kind of a boost. Compressed tone. Boost. So that was actually two tips in one, use the volume um, on the overdrive and then use the volume on the output block as a boost. Now, number seven, modulation. We need to add some modulation. I love modulation, chorus, tremolo, phaser, all of it, use it. But in a not so distant past update, <laughs> they added the retro reel. This thing can take off some top end and add character in the best of ways. And so for our last tip, if you are running dual amps or a single amp with a dual cab, and I mean two actual single cabs together, a dual, not one dual cab, but a, a single cab and a single cab, you can run this retro reel in front of one of them and kind of create this faux double tracking effect. It kind of separates the guitar tones and uh, it sounds really cool. It's something to play around with. So let me show you. So let's go back to single. Now I'll copy this. Bring this down to our B path and it's the same exact cab. So I copied it. So it's not the two different cabs I had before or the two different mics. They are exactly the same. Uh, but in front of here, we're going to put a mono. It doesn't need to be stereo because you're gonna be summing to mono anyways because you're only going into one cab. Go down to retro reel and you can play with this, but let's just see what the settings are. I like to slow down 
inches per second on the reel. I think it sounds pretty good. Actually, I like bumping up the saturation a bit. Let's, let's just see what it sounds like. Now, if you really want some separation, here's a little bonus tip for you. You can go into this uh, split block and uh, balance A all the way left, balance B all the way right, and do the same down here. Pan A right, left, Pan B right, you see what I'm doing. And then you can kind of get this. This separates it. And then it, it makes one clean and one dirty, so you might not want to um, pan it all the way. You could probably split the difference. So it's something to play around with. There's much more you can do. This is definitely not everything. Just some of the things I thought of that I wanted to pass along. But hopefully this sparks some creativity so you can go start making some good sounds on your own. Now, I did wanna say, if you don't know, I am working on my Helix for Worship course or whatever I'm gonna call it. And if you want to have input on the creation of that course and you want a free preset, click the link in the description. It'll take you to a quick survey. And like I said, if you wanna do a walkthrough, a step-by-step -step walkthrough of building a preset from scratch, with the methods that I like to use, click the link in the description to get your free, uh, what is it, Tone Secrets Guide. Free Tone Secrets Guide, it's for you. Go get it, link in the description, like I said. Plus, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, do that. I got some exciting things. I got some gear people have sent me. Exciting things right around the corner. Subscribe if you subscribe if you haven't. And I also just want to say thank you so much for watching these videos. It means a lot to me. I like hanging out with you guys and discussing all things worship ministry. So thank you so much. Hope you have a good rest of your week. Have a good day. See you in the next one. Bye.